Hi guys, in this video we will add a little bit of final touches to our configuration of Nginx as reverse proxy on our host and also we'll talk about other headers that might be important for your app. In between videos I had a little bit of time to do a little facelifting for our app, so here's the old version that runs right now on Nanogram IO and here's the fresh version that I have on my local host. So except for adding the CSS styles I also added XHR test, so this is the Ajax request to our host and that Ajax is returned back some data about the server, how server sees our connection. So the headers that server actually received. So from Node.js application perspective, it might be useful to see those when you are testing your deployment, everything works fine and everything works properly. Okay, so now let's redeploy this app. And frankly, I haven't done that yet. So I'm running this script, redeploy script that we built a few videos ago, right here for the first time and have no clue if it will work, it should work. Nothing should be wrong here, so stopped and PM2 should be restart. So PM2 looks online. Okay, great. Now let's test if our application works. Yay! New version is deployed to Nanogram. Took me just one second to rerun the script. Great. By the way, in the upcoming videos, we'll soon look at how to make this process even smoother, how to integrate Git into our workflow. But for now, we'll keep using our little shell script. So three headers that I want to take care of in this video are this guys, host, x real IP and x forward at four. Let's start with host since it looks like it's the most important one, right? So host is a header that allows our server side application to tell which site exactly a client is trying to get, right? So a single server can have multiple websites. So there might be Uricom, Nanogram IO, ABC.com, anything at all that is hosted on the same physical server of all available on the same host. So whenever you're typing Nanogram IO, this little line will be encoded in a host header. Now, if we go to Nanogram IO and open our Node.js application directly, as if it is not proxied by Nginx, let's do that, I exposed it again, by the way, you'll see that the host header where it is, here it is, host header as Node.js saw it, right? So these are the headers that Node.js saw, is Nanogram IO with the port. However, if you do the same from Nginx and refresh it right now, you will see that this host header is now lost and it says, localhost 8080. Why that happened? Well, because Nginx is calling the application from localhost and that's where this header is coming from. So we need to restore that back to Nanogram IO. Let's jump back to our configuration and fix this header field. So we need to be root again. So let's go SSH as root nanogram.io and you should already remember where our configs are. It's in Etsy. Nginx, confd, and here's our config for Nanogram IO. Okay, so let's open it. And here we will add configuration directives right on the top on the server level, right on this block, not inside of location, but on the whole server. Why? Because this configs will be the same for all the locations in this server. Setting host header will be pretty much the same as setting the other headers, but Instead of upgrade header, here we need header called host, and it will have the value of HTTP host. So whatever Nginx received as the host header, and it will be Nanogram IO, will be passed to our Node.js as the host header. Now let's save our configuration. I'm pretty sure that it will work, so I'll just restart Nginx. And now let's see how that changed from Nanogram IO, from Nginx, I'm calling our application again, and host is Nanogram IO. So this is the right way to pass this header to our Node.js app. Now two more headers to take care of are X real IP and X forwarded for. Why do you need them? This is the way to tell our backend what was the real IP address of the client that is trying to reach the server. Please notice that those are not reliable ways to tell that client really indeed came from those IP addresses. Those are really easy to spoof. So they are usually used just for recommendations or for some sort of logging for something that is not security critical. Okay, however, it is still quite useful for analytics, for example, or for recommendations as a 
mentioned before. So if we go to our Node.js app directly, here you will see that connected from, and this is the IP address of the socket itself on the lowest level. This is IP of a socket. You'll see this IP. It might be an IP of my machine, it might be an IP of intermediate proxy server, but I've got some IP. However, if I go through Nginx, you'll see that connected from goes to 127.0.0.1. So the socket address is localhost. Why? For the same reason, we have the local connection. So that's what Node.js will report. And these two headers is the convenient way to tell your backend apps what is the real IP address of a client. Again, I'll repeat it just once more. This is not a reliable way to tell what was the real IP of a client. Okay, but now let's restore those headers in our configuration. Let's go back to our server and continue editing our nginx conf. And we'll also need two more proxy set header directives. So x real IP. And as a value, we'll put here remote adder. And the final header that we will set, let me copy proxy set header is x forwarded for. Now this is an interesting header because it needs to contain all the intermediate IP addresses on, of all the proxy servers that bust this connection. Of course, if all the intermediate proxy servers obey this rule. And the value for it will be proxy add x forwarded for. This will be exactly the way to do that. Okay, so now let's save this config and test if it works. Restart Nginx again. So the socket address remained the same. Obviously, it didn't change. This is the address of the socket. However, now we have x real IP. This is the header that Node.js can now use to tell what is the IP address or what is the region that we are connecting from. And x forwarded for has just a single address because probably I'm not using any additional intermediate proxy servers to establish the connection. Great. So now since we have our configuration pretty much sorted out, let's go become our user again. Let's make a backup of this configuration. So to do that, I'll go and copy everything from Etsy Nginx. And I need to copy everything, so recursively, to my home folder. Now I've got Nginx folder. Now let's make a nice little archive here. Nginx tar gz and Nginx. Finally, I can remove this folder and I have a backup of my configuration. I will download this config now to my MacBook and I will save it together with the project. And it is actually a very good idea to save your configurations somewhere near the source code of the project, because if you lose them, it will then be very easy to access them. And also it will now be easy for you to grab those configs from GitHub and play around with them on your own servers. Stay tuned, in the next videos we'll see how to use Nginx to serve static files, also how to configure it to handle SSL encryptions, and finally how to use it to load balance between multiple Node.js nodes. See you in the next videos and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!